Hi, everyone. My name is Carson Long. Uh, I'm a technical staff member at VMware. I spend my day to day working on various Cloud Foundry features. Uh, I'm, today, I'm here to talk about one of those features, and that's HTTP2. So, my talk is HTTP2 Awesome, uh, bringing the protocol for the modern web to Cloud Foundry, otherwise known as the tale of how HTTP2 is brought to Cloud Foundry by some brave developers. So, here's the agenda. Uh, by the way, uh, among my team, we've started calling HTTP2 H2, because HTTP2 is a bit of a mouthful for everyday use. So I will be using H2 throughout to hopefully avoid confusion from some slips of the tongue. Why CF needs H2? So HTTP 1.1 uh, was accepted in 1999 and was awesome, but was designed for simplicity. In contrast, H2 was released in 2015 and was designed to make our application simpler, faster, and more robust. Who doesn't love that? I wish I could dive more deeply into H2. It's a massive subject and really interesting, but unfortunately, I only have 15 minutes. Um, so really, really briefly, uh, what changed? Uh, for the most part, the major change is that H2 breaks down HTTP communication into an exchange of binary encoded frames, which are then mapped to messages that belong to a particular stream, all of which are multiplexed within a single TCP connection. Uh, that enables a wide range of cool features that you'll see in H2. The main reason that H2 needs to come to Cloud Foundry is that it's popular. 50% of the top 10 million websites support H2 and all the major browsers support it. Uh, and at VMware, we've seen that developers ask about H2, either on GitHub or through customer requests. The major effects of bringing H2 to Cloud Foundry would be it would reduce app latency. That's what H2 is designed for. Uh, developers can now push H2 only apps uh, and gRPC becomes an option. Uh, both those bottom two are things that we've seen uh, developers asking for. So how CF Cloud Foundry actually gets H2. Uh, this is what we've been working on. So this is the typical networking flow. Uh, you're probably used to seeing HTTP 1.1 as the link in all of these chains. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the networking diagram, Envoy is the sidecar process that actually terminates TLS from the Go router uh, or between the Go router and the app. I'll talk more about H2C later. Uh, but this this is this is the the flow that we anticipate with this feature. Now uh, let's dive in. So the first link in the chain, load balancer. Uh, setting, getting checking checking of load balancers actually worked with H two was turned out to be relatively hard. There's a there's a lot of load balancers in the space. Each IaaS has multiple different options, uh, and you may ask, like, load balancers aren't really a part of Cloud Foundry besides HA proxy, which is more of a a developer use or uh, in development use case, not really production. Uh, so why do we care about this? Well, I mean, if load balancers don't support H2, then there isn't much point in bringing it to Cloud Foundry. Um, but yeah, there's just been a lot of complexity in this space. Uh, we found that uh, the only the new version of AWS load balancers supports H2 on Google. Uh, the front end of, of load balancers supports H2 automatically. So you may think you're com communicating H2, but it's actually converting it to HTTP 1.1 on the other side, uh, unless you manually go in and, and change it. Uh, now, uh, on, on the flip side, if you're using L4 or TCP load balancers in front of your foundation, then hooray for you, you're set. This, this feature will, will work, uh, on the, at least on the load balancer side. And you won't need any manual changes there. Uh, but yeah, still working on figuring out how, how this load balancer fits into the equation, but we've, we've come up with some solutions for every environment. Then the next link in the chain is the Go router, which actually turned out to be relatively straightforward. Uh, as you can see, I, I, I attached our code here. It's about two lines uh, of change. Now, this doesn't include tests and the feature flag, but still like, the main change was about two lines in the Go router. So amazing, very, very, very cool. Um, the last link in the chain, app compatibility, turned out to be the hardest thing. This is the Go router to the Envoy, and then after TLS has been terminated to the app. Um, so quick rundown on H2C. 
is that it is the clear text version of H2. It's actually a different protocol. Um, H2 depends on TLS because it is negotiated via Alpin. Again, only 15 minutes, so I'll keep this brief, but Alpin is a TLS extension that during the TLS handshake negotiates whether or not a request can use H2 or not. Um, so the flow we kind of imagined is that your the client, Go Router, can hit Envoy uh, with H2, and by updating the Envoy Alpin configuration, Envoy will actually accept, negotiate and accept H2. Uh, TLS will then be terminated and Envoy will forward H2C to the server. Um, now, the problem we quickly ran into was how do we determine if the server or app actually accepts H2? Uh, there's no way of knowing in this situation. So clearly this, we can't just forward H2 every time. Something has to happen in the middle uh, because an HTTP 1.1 app that receives an H2C connection will just drop that on the floor as far as we can tell, not ideal. Uh, so a change was needed. And that change was the H2C upgrade flow. H2C has its own upgrade flow. Unlike, uh, unlike H2, it does not require TLS because uh, H2C is made to be not over TLS. So it actually uh, works by attaching a couple new headers to the HTTP 1.1 request that ask the server or app uh, whether or not it, it works with H2C. If the app does accept H2C, it would then respond with a 101 switching protocols response and then proceed to send the response along the same TCP connection in H2. Um, so great, look, that, that works, we've done it. Not so much. Uh, unfortunately, what we found was that Golang does not support the H2C upgrade flow. Uh, we were able to implement this using manual code that we just uh, didn't go on our own, but we weren't able to use any of the libraries. And without the libraries, uh, this, this didn't seem to be a sustainable way forward. Actually, quick side note, this is actually, this flow right here is where the name of the talk comes from, HTTP2 Awesome. Uh, when we were developing this flow, uh, we found that H2C over TLS is not actually defined as a use case of H2C. So technically we joked that we made a new protocol uh, and we called that new protocol H2 awesome, just among ourselves. Um, so anyway, we, we, made a, we made a GitHub issue. We asked, hey, would y'all be willing to support this? And we pretty much got no response from the Golang team. That was not encouraging and pretty much put uh, put a stop on this upgrade flow. Uh, we didn't think it would be a good idea to go forward with this, given that uh, we didn't think Golang would be supporting it anytime soon, and we don't want to support this risky implementation on our own. So moving forward, we are currently considering a few different options. One is a health check to determine app compatibility. Uh, that would essentially be a new liveness check. It would only run once. Uh, the idea is that after the readiness checks are completed, we would hit the app with an H2 health check, health check. And if that call succeeded, then we would tell let the Go router know that it could continue to send H2 to the app or start sending H2 requests to the app. Uh, if that failed, then it would continue to send HTTP 1.1 requests to the app. That's one option that we're exploring. The second option is, oops, is the uh, app an app feature? This would mean including uh, an HTTP2 enabling option in the app manifest itself. Um, and I, that sounds exactly it's, as it sounds. That manifest feature would, again, let the Go router know that it can send H2 to the app or not. Um, the third option is a route feature. This would mean that when we map a route, we designate that route as either H2 or not. Um, again, it would, the Go router would be able to read that to know whether or not to forward H2 to apps or whether to use HTTP 1.1. Um, so those are all in development and we're, we're or all in experimentation and we're trying to figure out the best way forward with that. Um, but for now, you can do a quick demo. Uh, switch my screen share. Yeah, this is the flow that we've established, uh, sort of the, this was the upgrade flow. 
that we are not moving forward with, but this is what we imagine it will look like. On the right hand side, I have a app or I have a CF foundation that called Sticky Iguana, it's a Bosch light that will, that does not have H2 enabled. Um, so we see if I curl this Dora app, uh, okay. the, if I curl this Dora app, works, hi, I'm Dora, everything's in H1, all good. If we add HTTP2, uh, it does not, Go router will not accept H2 as a, uh, as a protocol option and will tell the uh, Alpen server to not agree to a protocol. Therefore, it's going to continue using H1, fine, whatever. If we add prior knowledge, which means don't try and negotiate a protocol, just use H2, we see that uh, Golang actually fails. Um, that's the current state of the world. Now on the right side, I have uh, a different uh, a different Bosch light environment. Uh, which is Savage Stinger, where I have included the H2 feature and I've turned on H2, enable HTTP2 there in the manifest. Oops. Oops. Let's not do that. Um, and I've pushed an H2C compatible app. Uh, so when we curl this, we should see, oh, H2 works. It accepts. It's accepted, it, H2 is what we get back. Uh, yay, H, H2 is working. Let me switch back to the slides. Great, so thank you for, for listening to this tech talk and uh, if you're interested in finding out more, having your opinions be known about H2, uh, please engage with us on GitHub. Routing release has an issue open, which is where most majority of the work is being tracked. So yeah, have a good Cloud Foundry summit. Uh, regarding possible improvements, we got stakeholders running use cases of setting many parallel crests in Blizzard. Uh, So Patrick, uh, yes, the Go router is capable of doing the HTTP2 multiplexing and still translating this into multiple HTTP1 connections towards the, its backend. Um, the additional performance impact, we've run some performance testing and seen that concurrent requests perform significantly better over H2 versus H1. Um, at less concurrency, I think it is slightly slower than H1 just due to the the translations and the um, the new route methods we had to add, but uh, it's a significant improvement uh, uh, on con on like many concurrent requests, which uh, is a is is estimatable up front, and we've been doing experiments in that direction. I'm also gonna drop in the link to the GitHub issue where we're tracking the majority of our work. Uh, I guess since, since that talk was recorded, we decided upon the third option, which is the route destinations option for implementing the backends portion of H2 routing or the end-to-end -end H2 routing. Um, there's a proposal for it on that GitHub issue, which describes it in more detail. Amelia, when can we expect this to come out? Uh, so actually the front end portion of H2, the bit that communicates from the user to the load balancer to the Go router is released in beta in the latest routing release. Um, now it is in beta, so that might, that feature flag and, and the stuff it enables might be deleted at any, at any time. Uh, we are currently working on the route destination backend uh, and hoping that that will join it soon. The uh, 
that takes a little more coordination because it I think it crosses three different three or four different releases um, and and it's it's a little it's it's tough to coordinate all three of those coming out at the same time so uh, we'll see on the back end but Patrick as I may ask the question to you, did the load on the router VMs themselves change when comparing h1 and h2 y yes. Yes, it did. I mean, H H two is is multiplexed, so the it'll be receiving uh, uh, less requests or less total requests, but the, while the backend receives the same number, if it's translating H two to H one, uh, because they can share the same TCP connection. Um, we've primarily been testing. I think the most of the load testing we've done has been on speed and accuracy and we found less dropped connections over h2 at high concurrency and uh faster speed over h2 at high at high higher concurrency and uh so gr grpc is possible with the full end-to-end -end h2 enabled uh from from the load from the client through to the app I uh, hope that answers the rest of your question, Patrick. Thank you. All right, uh, ten seconds left. Thank you all. Have a have a great CF summit.